One of the main um, bits, really, when you're dealing with mortgages, certainly around the residential side of things, is around income. And what I'm going to talk about is, in the, obviously, the title of this, uh, this video is around second incomes, so second jobs, second incomes. Um, this could be a second job, it could be rental income, it could be pension income, it could be maintenance income, it could be benefits income. So all of those things are secondary income. Let's just assume that you are, you know, you're employed, you've got your day job, and then you've got this additional income. Now, you would have thought that that's fine, that's your income, and that's pretty straightforward to deal with. Well, not necessarily, because when it comes to second incomes, many lenders treat them differently. So in this, uh, in this video, and I've done an article, and I'll put a link to the article, which is a question and answers article on our website. And do check out our website, guys. We get thousands and thousands of uh, views uh, every day, really, I think. Um, probably, yeah, every day, thousands of views every day. Um, with you know the various articles we've done over the last I don't know 13 odd years so there's a lot of content out there but this article really uh, is a question and answers around some of the main questions that I get but for now let's go and talk about the questions so how does second incomes be so basically the first thing is how long should a second income be running this is a really good one because what happens is, and, and this touches on a lot of the underwriting that the lenders view it, um, often, often I get inquiry forms come in and you see their first job and then you see their second job started last month, just before they're about to get a mortgage. Um, rule number one is whether you're going to declare any, any, any sort of income is about sustainability of that income. So the lenders want to see that that income is a long-term income. If they're going to use that for your mortgage, which typically is 20, 25 year term, bearing in mind 20, 25 years, and you've been in your second job for a month, that's not very sustainable to them. So the general rule, and they've all got various rules around this, but the general rule with many of the lenders is they want to see that second income for six months. Now this is just for second jobs. Okay, when you talk about other types of income, rental income and so forth, we will touch on that. But let's just assume you've just got a second job. Okay, the second job is generally six months. Some lenders would want it for 12 months. There are one or two lenders that will do it for three months. Now, there's got to be a link there. Okay, so if you've started in your job for three months, they will look at that a lot more closely. They want to make sure that that's sustainable, that's going to continue long term. You haven't just taken, bottom line is you haven't just taken this job because you want to get a mortgage because you need it for affordability. Okay, there you go. I've said it. And we see it all the time. I see it all the time. I see somebody, oh yeah, no, but you know, I've got a new job and I could get a mortgage on that. That's the whole point. The whole point is the lender wants to see that you've got a second job. You've been doing that for a long time. You've been earning the money. Taxes have been paid on it. And it's a sustainable and viable job to do. Okay. Viability is the key. Okay. So how will affordability work for second jobs, second incomes? Good question. Right. Um, when you are dealing with uh, second incomes, the general rule by a lot of the lenders is that they would want that second income for I think they normally take 50% of it. So the standard rule with many of the lenders out there, if it's secondary income, they'll use 50% of that secondary income. Right? Now, there are other lenders that will do it 60%. There are some that do 65%. There are some that will do 75%. And there are some that will do 100%. For example, there's a lender out there, if you've been in your job for six months, a second job for six months, and the income is obviously shown on your monthly pay slips, which must do, um, or weekly, um, they will take 100% of that second income. So there you go. So it really depends. Now, why wouldn't you go to that lender every time? Because just because they're, they're quite good on their second income, they may not be as generous on their first income. They may not take elements of that second income uh, for example, and I will touch on this, you know, some second incomes are often nowadays are, are rental incomes, okay? There are lenders that don't actually use any rental income. So you've got to be careful there. And that's why 
that's why you should really speak to a independent mortgage broker if not us there are plenty of them out there but uh that gives you an idea around the second room. i have two jobs and i've recently changed my job how does this impact my mortgage so if it's one of the jobs generally the rules are around changing jobs and moving jobs is are you still in the same sector what were you doing before was there a gap between the two jobs generally if it's within three weeks then lenders are okay um, now some lenders have got various rules so some lenders would say you must be in your current job for three months Barclays have got that for example okay there, there can be lenient a little bit but general rule is three months there are other lenders that don't have a rule you know um, you could do it on your on your day on your day one now don't be fooled by day one start okay um, I get this quite a lot and again people get declined on this so this is about underwriters looking at the progression of jobs and going right okay well he was doing it was a computer I don't know programmer for 12 months here and then he's changed jobs yes he's only had a week break between the two jobs we'll accept that you can't not be working for 10 years and then go do you know what I'm gonna get a job and I'm gonna go for a mortgage and let me go for a mortgage that doesn't have um, doesn't have a minimum requirement within the job because the likelihood is guys your case will get audited the underwriters will throw throw the case out because they want to see a history of it yes they don't have a minimum time in current job but it's very specific and underwriters will look at things like that I have a zero hour contract on my second job okay often I'm getting a lot of this zero hour contract stuff uh, with, with the, the way the economy is um, what's the rules around that generally if you're in zero hour contract whether it's a first job or second job you need to be doing that for 12 months so remember I touched on the six months rule well in this particular scenario it turns into 12 months if it's a zero hour contract is there a number of hours I can be working the second jobs now this is an interest one because before we were when we were in EU they used to lenders used to sometimes defer to the European human rights guidance to say look you can't be slave drivers you can't be doing 100 hours a week okay now as we've come out of it I haven't seen any lenders point to it so in theory you can be doing um, there isn't a there isn't a cap what I would say is also again it's about viability and sustainability so the underwriter wants to know you know it's all great you're saying you got three jobs and you're making all this money to make the affordability work for a mortgage however is it really sustainable can you do that can you be you know at four places at the same time for example so again it's viability sustainability and a good broker will be bringing that to your attention will be talking to you about this um, because you know sustainability is going to be key um, does my second job need to be similar to my main job great question here um, no the answer is no you can be you know you could do uh, you, know, you could work in an office and be a taxi driver for example um, it doesn't they don't have to link it's nice if they do you know and you get often you get someone who is uh, I don't know a, a, an accountant for example for a corporate company and then they do um, you know consultancy uh, as a self-employed sole trader or under a limited company so um, that's fine um, let's talk about that actually um, uh, well my second job my job is self-employed here we go my job is self-employed um, can I use the second income yes you can um, now it depends on the structure of that so generally if you're self-employed you're either sole trader or a limited company there are rules around this if you are a limited company or sole trader generally the high street lenders would want a history of two years and generally what they do is they average out the last two years you earn twenty thousand pounds this year fifteen thousand pounds last year is seventeen and a half thousand pounds income secondary income then that lender will have its own rules on that seventeen and a half thousand pounds whether they'll take fifty percent sixty percent seventy or hundred percent so that's the general rule if you're going to go to the high street if you're going to go to the non-high street lenders okay um, then which typically have got higher rates but are more flexible around things like this they'll go by the latest year's figure or one year's accounts depending if you've been trading for only one year so 
you could in theory have put one year's accounts through or you could have been running this as a secondary job but you know I've, I've not made a lot of money but maybe last year you did quite well and you want to go by the latest year's figure so again you can do so there are some lenders will take 50 percent there's a majority of those non-high street lenders will take 50 percent but there are a few lenders that will take a hundred percent so again give and take and it depends on the knowledge of the broker and you explaining the situation to them uh, uh you know in a, in, a, in a right manner can i use oh my second job uh, can i use my secondary income if it's coming from abroad this is a really tricky one um in a lot of the cases i would say no okay there are circumstances where you can depends on the currency it's being paid depends on what type of income it is if it's you know some people get paid for example some people get paid their bonuses in us dollars got that quite often some people have got property income now the general rule is the lenders the ones that will accept it um, they would want uh, they would generally want you to have paid the tax here in the UK from the for the foreign income um, it's complicated you do really need to speak to a mortgage broker on that one so not straightforward but in most cases I would say no Will my interest rate be higher on a second income type mortgage if I'm using my second income? No, uh, pretty much all high street lenders, all lenders use secondary income. Like I said, it's just about how much of that secondary income they will take and at what criteria they will use around that. I actually have three jobs. Does this change my second income rule? No, you can, like I said, you can have three jobs. Uh, it's not necessarily going to matter. Um, there are some lenders that will only take two jobs um, so they will ignore the third again if you're speaking to a mortgage broker they've got access to the whole of the market and they can actually source the right lender for you that will accept you know all three jobs income depending on how much they will use um, there are some questions around our grants and bits and pieces which I'm going to leave off they're in the article you can have a read through them um, I have two daily rate contracts uh, will fall into a second job rule um, that's a good one. So contractor mortgages are a little bit different um, because there are some lenders that will say, look, we'll only work off one of the contracts. So we'll only see one of the contracts. If you've got multiple contracts, then essentially we'll see you as a self-employed person. And if you're a self-employed person, you need to be doing two years tax returns. That's what their views are. There are other lenders that will say, no, you can have multiple contracts. That's fine. Uh, and there are various rules around the contract. Must be generally within three, you know, must have been doing it for a while. You must have contracted experience for one or two years. Generally, they would want that contract to have been in place for three to six months and generally, or, or a renewal. And generally, they would want some time on that contract left. If not, they would want some sort of reassurance from the, uh, from the party to um, that the contract will continue okay so that gives you an idea now there's only there's only there's one other category in regards to second incomes that I want to touch on otherwise well, actually two um, one of them is around rental income um, more and more people are actually got buy to let rental income declared so the way that works in regards to if you want to use that rental income is again we've got some lenders that will take a lot of them will take 50% of rental income you've got some a few that will take a hundred percent of the rental income um, and and generally they'll take the average, but you have got some non-high street lenders that will take the last year's income. But more importantly, there are some lenders that do not, and there are some big lenders that do not take uh, rental income if the property has got a mortgage on it. I'll give you an example, Halifax. Halifax is one lender that does not take buy-to-let income if the property's got a mortgage on it. There are a number of other lenders out there. So again, and there are some lenders that will take 100% of the income. Now, depending on whether it's a, uh, you know, and, and there are lenders that will take 100% of rental income. That's it. You don't need to have a first job as well. That's important to know. So um, rental income is important. The next bit is benefit income. So child maintenance, or you can have child credit, various sort of benefits, state benefits that you can have. Child benefits, the normal one. Okay, so child benefit, generally lenders will take again they'll use a rule on that um, a lot of the lenders tend to use six a hundred percent on the child benefit but there are some that will take um 60 60 65 percent there are a number of non-high street lenders that do not take any benefit income so you've got to be mindful around that so um when it comes to benefits income it's just going to be generally they want to see um they want to see that showing on the 
bank statements um, or an awards letter. Um, and when you're looking at child benefit, for example, um, the age of the children do matter. Um, I think up to 11, they tend to use it. Anything over that, they tend not to use it. So um, there are rules, even rules around child benefit, uh, but certainly disability allowance, maintenance payments. So when you're talking about secondary income or maintenance payments, generally they want to see a history of that maintenance payment, whether it's court ordered, so it's issued by the court, or whether it's a voluntary agreement. Lenders have got rules around that. Generally, they want to see three, six, 12 months history of that income for them to take that into account. Um, that's about it, guys. The moral of the story is, look, you can use all these type of incomes, but sustainability is going to be key. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.